Hi friends, welcome to another episode of the Enneagram Workshops Coaching Conversations. My name is Vanessa Fernandez and I'm your host. And today we're gonna to talk about self-observation. So when I first started learning about the Enneagram, a lot of teachers, a lot of books, a lot of content that I was coming into contact with kept mentioning this thing called self-observation. And it didn't make sense to me at first what they were even talking about. But as I've learned more and as I've started to put into practice what I've been learning, it's actually one of the most vital pieces to experiencing growth and transformation in your type. So self-observation is basically what it says, observing yourself, but not on a surface level. And it's observing the deeper reasons why. The Enneagram is unique uh, in its approach to personality because it doesn't deal with the external manifestations of what we do. Uh, it actually deals with why we do the things we do, why we make the decisions we make. And this is why it can be a little tricky to find your type because different people can do different, the same thing. We can all do the same thing. You can get five people in a room, we all have the same reaction but it's for different motivations and reasons and the internal uh, core desire or core fear can be completely different. And so because of that, observing ourselves, practicing self-observation is gonna have to move beyond what did I do? What did I do is kind of what I used to do when I was a kid and I would write my journals. Did anybody else write journals as a kid? <laughs> I had so many journals and I would literally start it off Dear journal, like I was writing to a friend. <laughs> Today, I went to the park with my sister, we found this rock, we did this activity, and it's purely surface level, here's a report of what I did. Now, that's a great place to start when you're doing self-observation, because it gives you a context. What happened in your day? When I do self-observation, I typically do it in the evening, and I write my highs and my lows. What were some of the best moments of my day, moments where I felt really empowered, I felt really encouraged, I felt really aligned with myself and who I want to be, moments when I felt really excited and happy or successful. And then I'll also write down a couple moments that are my lows. Some people like to call them lessons, but I don't mind calling them lows. Um, so moments where I didn't show up as my best self, moments where I gave in to ego, moments where I felt discouraged, trapped, small, suffocated. We, we can identify those usually pretty well, <laughs> um, almost better than our highs. Most of us, we can just, I don't know, the lows just hit us, they stick with us. So I write down my highs and my lows and that gives me that surface level, what did I do today, of significance, and it gives me a place to start, but true self-observation has to go a couple steps deeper. So after I, I ask myself, what did I do today? I ask myself, why? Why did I do those things? And this is a hard question because sometimes it's not immediately apparent. A lot of Enneagram work is not immediately apparent. A lot of times we'll read things or we'll interact with suggestions for growth activities or we'll interact with how our number behaves in stress or security and we'll think, oh, no, 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 that's not me. Oh, silly, that's just not what I do. That's not how I respond. That growth activity probably wouldn't be very helpful for me because at the quickest moment, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be right. Only when we sit and we really get honest with ourselves and we really let those motivations kind of come up to the surface. We gotta dig for them a little bit. Nine times out of 10, the things that I brushed off about the Enneagram that I thought, oh no, 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 that's not me. Oh no, 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 that doesn't apply to me. Oh no, 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 that's not helpful. When I sit with it for a little bit, I'm like, gosh darn it, that's actually 100% spot on. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it because I haven't been practicing self-observation. It takes time, my friends. It takes getting really curious. So after I do my highs and lows, 
I ask myself, why did I do these things? Why did I show up so calmly and so centered and so wonderfully with my son when he was throwing a tantrum yesterday? What was it that was different about yesterday that allowed me to show up in that way? Oh, my meditation practice. My meditative practice that morning was all about releasing my need to control. And so when I had that moment of stress with him, I could actually release control and allow him his space to tantrum all he needed to, <laughs> to not take it as a personal reflection on me as a mom and just walk with him through that situation. That's, that's, that's a piece of self-observation right there that's really helpful for me to not only reinforce the amazing benefit of meditative practice, but also to identify, to feel the pleasure of the growth that I'm seeing in my life. Because that makes me wanna repeat that action. That makes me wanna repeat that feeling of, wow, did I really do that? Did I really show up in that way? Am I really transforming and growing? Growth is so slow and at times painful. Any little bit of growth I wanna celebrate like big time. <laughs> then uh, I may ask myself, well, why did I not show up as my best self when I'm going into my lows? What was, what was contributing to me kind of losing it when I wasn't in sync communicating with a friend of mine that I care about and, and we're not understanding each other and my ego just went bananas and I couldn't handle it. And I wanted to run to the grocery store and get a pint of ice cream and drown my sorrows. <laughs> of not being understood in just a big old bowl of ice cream. What was it? That was not my best moment of the day. Why? Why? What am I holding on to? What am I not releasing? And then this is the last question. After I ask myself, why did I do those things? The final question is, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of in this relationship? Am I afraid of losing it? Am I afraid that it will become too broken to repair? Am I afraid of changing myself to please this person? Being inauthentic to who I am? Asking myself, what am I so afraid of is the final piece for me to truly get into a self-observation um, cycle. So what happened? Give me the facts. Why did I make those choices? And then what am I so afraid of? Simply asking those three questions about the, the events of my day, taking time to journal, taking time to reflect, is how I practice self-observation. And it is one of the most powerful work that I do with the Enneagram because we can't address what we don't observe. We can't start speaking truth if the lies are hidden. We can't move out the old if we don't uncover it in the first place. So that's my challenge to you today. Take some time for self-observation. Be okay with sitting for a few minutes, even if it doesn't quickly come to mind, let the questions of why did I do those things? What am I so afraid of? Let those questions just kind of, questions that make us feel uncomfortable, we can embrace them and allow them to really stir up or we can suppress them and shut them out. My encouragement to you is embrace the uncomfortableness of those questions, let it stir up everything that's inside so then we can start getting to work, finding freedom and moving forward.